Hey everyone, Tuto and back from Spiral Gameplay. This time one of the funniest games I've had in a long while. I just played this game today. I'm going to upload it as soon as possible because it's so funny. Uh, so I'm going second here in Diamond Ranked and my opponent is playing Amorphages. Now you may not see Amorphages a lot because it's not that good a deck, but the, the gimmick is they are one of the most oppressive Floodgate decks ever, but they have a negative resource engine, which is uh, very funny. So I'm going to show you what they got here after I draw my card, kind of let you get the whole uh, field as I see it. So. Let's go through their cards. Uh, first up is Amorphage Lechery. This card's pretty absurd. Its pendulum effect is while you control an Amorphage monster, which they do. Uh, neither player can activate spell cards or their effects except for Amorphage cards, which means his Amorphage continuous spell here is uh, active. Uh, that's pretty nasty. It's Imperial Order, right? That's that's insane. One's uh, largely one-sided, too, because they can activate their own Amorphage spells. But uh, once per turn, during your standby phase, tribute one monster or destroy this card. So, with only one monster on the field, they they have to sack this monster or lose their Imperial Order, so it's it's a really nasty negative consequence and means that they're not going to be able to have this on there forever. Though they do have Amorphage Infection, which allows them to every time a monster is tributed, which you would or destroyed, which you would do for the uh, upkeep effect of these uh, Amorphage Pendulum effects, uh, they can add a Amorphage card from deck to hand. This lets them like cycle Amorphages out of the field into the extra deck because uh, when they sack it with the card, it goes to the face of extra deck and then get one on the uh, in the hand to replace it. But they do have two on the field, and this is Amorphage Sloth, which says uh, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand without, except by drawing them. This is Thunder Dragon Colossus. Uh, uh, this is pretty nasty. And uh, once per turn during your standby phase, tribute one monster or destroy this card. So pretty absurd. So as you can see, I can't really do much here. I can't add cards from my deck to hand, so I can't use Terraforming. And even if I could add cards from deck to hand, I couldn't use it because it's a spell card. This stops from using spells. The other thing is the Amorphages all have an on-field effect of if this card is Pendulum Summoned or flip face up, and this was obviously Pendulum Summoned, neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck while this card is face up on the field, except Amorphage monsters that they would stack to the top of the deck with uh, the uh, the effects that they're like stacking them and tributing them. So I'm, uh, I can't summon from the extra deck, I can't activate spells, and I can't search for cards. That's a pretty absurd block out of the deck. The upside is they only got a 400 attack monster on the field, but 2350 defense, so I can't summon a, a beater and attack over it very easily. I have this Nemesis Quarter in here for like a Halkadon setup, but uh, or into Thunder Dragon Colossus, and this is a 1900 attack normal summon, but uh, that's not good enough. They, they can't attack over this, especially with Infection on the field, which uh, all Amorphage monsters gain 100 attack and defense for each Amorphage card on the field. So this guy's normally a, like an 18 or a, a 1950, so it's possible you could have a 2000 attack beater, but uh, with the, the pendulum effects and the monster itself, not good enough. So, my only plan here is, uh, they're not killing me anytime soon, so I might as well get my cards in rotation. Use, uh, Magician's Zolls while I can, uh, Drop Drone. I have to use Magician's Zolls now because they have cards in their deck that stop monster effects, so might as well use Magician's Zolls while I can. I think I just stack a random Amorphage to the top of the deck. It was all Amorphages in, like, a pot of Extravagance, and I didn't want them to draw two. So they're gonna draw an Amorphage, add an Amorphage off of Infection, so they kinda, you know, they're drawing a card and adding an Amorphage every turn, so they're kinda breaking even. So they go ahead and search Gluttony and draw a card. And they're going to let Lechery pop itself, which is, makes sense because they want to get another Amorphage on the field. Or another Amorphage in rotation. They basically wanna, the idea of this deck is that you're going to slowly uh, fill up your extra deck with Amorphage monsters that you can then, with maybe another Ancillary Pendulum's effect, uh, Ancillary Pendulum engine, get a higher scale so you can fully uh, pin summon as many monsters as you want over the course of several turns. And uh, the Pendulum cards kind of replace themselves every turn so you can offset the, the tributing effects and keep up your floodgates. It's, it's kind of like this weird self-sustaining loop, but if you could ever start killing their creatures, they start running out of resources very quickly. So that's kind of like the plan, plan here. Obviously, I don't have anything that can, though. You know, if this nest was maybe a Bigfoot, I could potentially tribute summon it and start attacking over his monsters. And uh, they're going to go ahead and let Sloth pop. They're going to keep Gluttony on the field by uh, sending this... Which one was this? This is Greed, yeah. And they're going to drop a, a Wrath, which stops me from tributing monsters. Which, you know, that play I just mentioned with Bigfoot, no longer possible anymore because I can't tribute. It also turns off Drone's uh, secondary effect to uh, pop my own monsters, which is pretty relevant. They're going to go ahead and pin summon, and the, they, you know, pin summon from hand, pin summon from extra deck, and they, they basically, as long as they're adding, as long as they're drawing a monster they can pin summon, or getting a spell they can play that can maybe do such and something like that, they can keep up these upkeep costs of, uh, of two per turn to keep me locked out of the game, while they maybe slowly build up resources. But, now that Lechery is gone, I can activate my spell cards, and now the, uh, now I can start adding cards from field because the Sloth is, or adding cards from deck because Sloth is gone. I'm going to use Spire Resort to get Last Resort, and my plan here is, I can, with Terraforming for Spire Resort, I can now actually get 
three spiral cards in rotation. I already got Master Plan in rotation from um, Magician Souls, and Resort can pop itself, which is going to be the plan here. And as soon as they attack over my drone, I can summon my Sleeper, and uh, if, the, if the Gluttony ever goes away, I can equip Blast Resort. So I get Blast Resort just in case that happens, and none of my other spiral cards are really doing anything. I can't really do, do much with them under Gluttony, so I might as well get the one that can eventually be really, really good with Sleeper, and that's kind of like my long-term plan here. So my opponents doing the circle thing. They like Gluttony Pop, which is maybe a mistake, but they wanted to get a high scale, which makes sense. So uh, with the Amorphages, the only really good beaters they have are the six-star Amorphage Sloths, and none of the Amorphages that they have access to right now have high scales. So they drew this Bisma Gear, so they want to use it so they can start actually applying pressure and try to kill me. Right? And all this Floodgate uh, stuff doesn't really mean anything if they can't ever actually attack over my dumb creatures and kill me. So they do get a couple of sloths on the field now, thanks to that Bisma gear. This is why they kind of run the uh, Ancillary Engine for high scales and access to the middle field's effects. And they start attacking my monsters. Now, I do have three spiral cards in my graveyard. And, you know, Sleeper could attack over a sloth if I wanted it to. But I can now search cards from my deck and activate spells. And I have one for one in hand, so I've, made, I've got a better plan. A, a little bit of a longer term plan, but a better plan, I think. So I'll go ahead and pitch this useless Nemesis Corridor. I can't summon from the extra deck ever, because all of these guys, all the Amorphages, stop extra deck summonings. And, uh, I can't, I feel like especially most, yeah, this is just, you know, completely locked out of the extra deck. So this Nemesis Corridor is nothing but a freaking Gemini Elf. So I might as well get rid of it with one for one, get my quick fix, and now get Big Red. And this is the card, this is like the hot, this is the Eureka moment, Hallelujah moment, where I was like, oh, None of these, none of these cards can, like, pop back row. You'd have to like hard draw a Harpy's Feather Duster or something if I act, just go ahead and activate Big Red and put my uh, Master Plan on the field. And Master Plan's obviously going to keep drawing me cards over the course of several turns because I can keep adding rescues and and assaults and such. So I just go ahead and get the rescue, and I have a plan here. So potentially, eventually, they're not going to want to keep sacrificing their monsters for Wrath's effect because it's not that relevant. Or maybe they don't really realize what I can do. And once they get, once this card's gone and I can actually tribute my monsters, uh, it's game time. And we'll see that in just a second why. So they go ahead and let Wrath lapse. They go ahead and activate another infection, which actually boosts these guys over Sleeper Threshold. So I'm kind of glad, you know, there's a, there's a potential that I, if they could have added my last resort, they could attack over my Sleeper, and that would have been terrible for me. I did set these rescue missions, and I, I should have, I definitely wanted to set one to use its on-field effect, but I set both of them just in case my opponent, like, found some back row removal and started attacking over all my monsters and, like, could put together a lethal threat. Having those rescue missions in Graveyard is very good for surviving a lethal threat. So my opponent's going to, you know, use their infections and whatnot, and use their metal flows effects, and... Metal Scanner isn't really going to do a whole lot here. Just special summons a uh, Metal Cast here, Pair Metal Foes Metal Caster. And uh, they go ahead and get Greed off of Infection and whatnot. And uh, here we go. There it is. Okay, so they start. Now they're actually putting together a lethal force, right? And if I don't have any monsters on the board, this would be game. You know, 32, 32, 2,000. Yeah, that's that's 6,000 plus 2,000 is game. So uh, that, that's pretty dangerous. But uh, I've got Big Red. Master Plan's driving her car, and she's not killable. By just battle, and uh, <laughs> this is the fun thing about Spiral. Even in these weird, like, grindy, dumb games, all these dumb floodgates where I'm locked out of my game plan, I still got dumb cards like Big Red with their their. Why is this even on this card? It cannot be destroyed by battle. Why is this on Big Red? It's already a good enough card. Well, here here's why. Because you get dumb stuff like this, and it comes up. It's like a roar on being able to search for a trap or return a trap from your graveyard to your hand. It's you, know, you never expect to use this effect, but when it does, it's hilarious. So I'll go ahead and get drone. With my rescue mission, you, if getting drove rescue mission, you might see my plan. Uh, they they let their wrath lapse, so now I can activate monster effects that require a tribute, and uh, I should go ahead and use master plan just because why not? But uh, I can normal summon drone, use drone, and pump my master plan for I for 500 attack for each card my opponent controls. And uh, this is a pendulum deck, baby. They got nothing but cards they control. This is nine cards on the field, which means my master plan is going to have a 4500 attack boost that I'm also going to be able to do the last resort play of being able to use last resort to send rescue missions so my master plan can attack directly. They've got a zero attack monster on the field, so I didn't need that. But what I did need is the rescue mission in Graveyard to summon my drone again. Just like all good spiral cards, drone is not a hard once per turn. You just use it again, pump her again, and oh goodness, that's a 10,200 attack master plan that can attack directly. Uh, what are you going to do about that, man, with this uh, Parametal Fusion set? Nothing. They are dead in one shot to the, the most powerful 
blockbuster juggernaut monster of the deck, Master Plan. This is the reason Master Plan's banned, everyone, in TCG. She's just too powerful. She attacks directly, kills your opponent. You can't stop it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was just a, a hilarious game, one of the most funny games I've ever played. It was actually miserable for like five turns playing it, but once I saw the plan coming together, once I saw them lose their floodgates so they could summon their monsters, I was like, ah, I've got them now. And uh, yeah, that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, throw a like, comment, subscribe, anything like that. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.